In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, for some time past, we read a question that a married man was asking that his financial capability has gone down. At the same time, the wife has gained a good job. But the wife is not willing to help him take care of the house. So we came out with the word of God trying to tell us to help our fellow man. So he went on and has brought a new one that seems to suggest that the woman has now accepted to help. But probably there is another demand which he wants to see whether we can have scripture to it. So if she changes her mind and decide to support the home until my financial condition improves, please, will it be godly Christian woman's conduct if she wants me to pay her back every penny she has spent on the family? In other words, indirectly, the woman said, I'm going to help you, but when things are okay, I'll spend 10000 for the last three months, give it to me. A marriage like this will not stand the test of time. So we came to conclusion, and it is accepted by Scripture, that the intention of Jehovah God of bringing a woman to Adam for a wife was that the wife is going to help. Genesis 2.18 I've said it. Man shall not live alone. It is not good. I, God will make him and help meet for him. It was God who saw that it was not good for man to live and therefore he will make a help meet to man. And that is why Eve was brought to Adam as a wife to help Adam in the situations of life. In marital relationship, in the mind of God, as it was spewed out by Adam, who was a representation of God, two shall become one. And God didn't shake his head. It is true. In the mind of God, the two women, the two men, one man and one woman, even though you see yourself separately, in the sense you are one, Apostle Paul said that we must love the woman in a sense like ourselves. Because when you look at it physically, they are two people. But the mindset of the believer must change. The mindset of the man must change. That the man I'm staying with, the woman I'm staying with, in a sense, God look at us as one person. So Apostle Paul emphasized, let the man look at the woman in a sense like himself. That's the love extended of love that he gave unto man. So in the mindset of God, we are two separate human beings, but so long as our livelihood and our conduct within our home is concerned, we are of the one household. One household. So if God is looking at us as one household, man and woman, and in the sense of our father Adam and the father Eve, mother Eve, whatever situation that they found themselves, they found solution 
together. Genesis chapter 3 verse 7. When they saw that they were naked, they found solution together of their nakedness as one household. Adam didn't find solution to himself and Eve didn't find solution to herself. It was a concerted effort to clothe them their nakedness by one same method fig leaves they covered themselves with fig leaves solving the problem of their nakedness as one household so that intention of love for man and wife and oneness made God call them realizing that the leaves will dry and it will not be permanent so when God killed an animal and raised the ladder, ladder as a garment, he clothed both of them. God clothed Adam and Eve. He made clothes for Adam and Eve. They are one household. So he cannot say, Adam, it is a woman who was deceived. So come, let me help you. And then see that you help, you help your wife. He sought the problem out because in the mind of Adam and Eve, they themselves solved the problem out together. Even though their problem was not permanent, their solution was not permanent, it go to show that the mindset of Eve and the minds of Adam was a unified one trying to solve problem. And God cemented it by giving them all the same clothing solving the same problem for the same household the first time on earth that two people have become one and a man and wife has constituted a household i want you to think of that word carefully the moment god lifted the power of paradise out of east of eden and man began to fend for himself and herself, God looked at them as one household. Whatever came into the presence of Adam's place of stay or if place of stay is affecting them. Not one person. If it affects Adam, it affects Eve. It affects Eve, it affects Adam. For the common household, one household was the first implementation of a man and a wife on earth. And it goes till today that the moment a man and a woman get married and they have a roof over their head, that roof over their head becomes their household. And whatever happens in that household is for the household and the different people household is very important if the man brings cold from outside into the house because you are one you will catch it if the woman brings coals outside because you are one and you are both of them staying in the same house you are going to get get it so the household conception it's very important to God. If you see a man married with children, with servants, if they can, and they say that, oh, magnify the name of the Lord with me, it's the people within the household and friends that can join him to praise the Lord. The first call people that will be part and parcel of the man jubilating or the woman jubilating will be the spouse and his children and the people who are closer to his house so when we read Psalm 34 verse 3 when we see the man talking about oh magnify the Lord with me you must realize that David has wives and have children and has servants and they don't live in separate houses they have the same household, which is the palace. 
to magnify the name of the Lord with me is one household joining hands with one of the men who by the grace of God God has done wonderful thing to him and is bringing joy to the family Colonials will tell you salvation has come to me and my household praise the Lord so marriage is the orchestration and the foundation bearer of what we call household a man and a wife children spouses auntie uncles who are living with you who when situation come to the house it affects them you become a household and the most important call is wife man and children so we realize now that if we are one household and my husband has got promoted and he brings the information to the house the house rejoices if the woman brings promotion that today my business has expanded i'm very great it brings joy but if there is no unity within the household and then there are divisions of labor to the extent that the help must be recompensed recompensated and the rest then it becomes a competitive two people in a house not one person people in a house but god look at you as two in one wherever there is a marriage and within the house they don't look at themselves as one household but individual people there is going to be competition if it becomes well with one one will begin to say well it is him if it comes well it is her so we must share things according to the way things are happening and before you realize the household become divided and if possible the marriage will break the concept of household is a unified people facing the same common problem with no take for tax it's a household whatever comes to us we solve the problem together we do things together we make sure that the joy in the house is for man wife and children so the concept of household one two people becoming one is the mind and the heart because the flesh and the things and conditions of the world has not made two people to become one it is impossible you go your way i go my way so it is the concept of the mind changing every married man every married woman must have a mind changing concept that i am one with my husband we speak the same language we think the same. we must forge our hair ourselves to know each other to the extent that nothing can separate us it's a concept of mind any marriage that has not built itself to that concept and look at the woman down there and look at the man down there who will we'll, we'll, we'll separate for apostle paul said look at the woman look at the woman like yourself and if you do that you cannot belittle the woman and make her downtrodden person if she's like yourself and the woman will look at the man not downtrodden but respect like herself so whatever he goes on to do or comes on into the house it's for the whole house to consume be it bad or wrong or good we have to so the mentality of being married to a man and still being separated by the portion of their works and their property is wrong 
it's not based on scriptural knowledge of the love of a man to a wife the love of a man to a wife is making sure that the woman is loved like myself one person even though you are two and it's a concept the world and satan will let you know that it is not true you are a very rich woman your husband is poor he's coming to say hello to you because you are rich the moment he gets the riches he will just separate himself and get away from you that's a world mentality and the devil saw it in the mind of so many men so many women until before they enter into the marriage there are suspicions among themselves but a true christian marriage who have the holy spirit conducting the marriage in them this suspicion must be thrown away so that the house will become one it's very important the concept of household so in psalm 35 verse 26 we come back to the same thing when the man is saying, let him magnify the lord with me the first portion that you have to think is that we are talking about the closest family for david is not living alone david have wives and children let them be ashamed and brought to confusion together that rejoice at my head let them be clothed with shame and dishonor that magnify themselves against me i brought this in because when it hits one person in the house it has reached another person so if your husband have got enemies and they are planning his downfall and they are destroying his life and you hear it because you are one with your husband your heart will pant pant and you will run to tell your husband find solution to this problem but when the house is disorganized and this man is holding one person here this man is holding one person here when the wife hears of a bad plot against the man and then got to know he will hear because of his foolishness that's the way that the world lives they want evil to happen to the spouse because they are not one with him or her but it is not supposed to be so if i'm a king like david and i have wives and children and you hear things around me which is plotting against me as a wife and as my household you must let me be for when david is saying these things let them be clothed with shame and dishonor and magnify themselves against me and the wives are standing by him when he's saying this they should say amen 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 because they don't like this thing to happen but in this modern world when two people are saying at home and they do this man is doing one thing this one they don't even mind it is your problem solve it if you have a problem i will leave you i'll go to somewhere else so marriages in 21st century laodicea the basement the foundation of household is eroded in the minds of many women many men people don't trust their wives wives don't trust their husbands so things are hidden and therefore i give you you pay me back you pay the doorbell i pay the water bill and things go hand in hand as if we are doing business in our own houses it's very important for the concept of household to dwell in every marriage for man have died and the women didn't know the property of the man because when they were living together they were married in the eyes of people but the concept of oneness and household was not there the man died and the, and the woman died and the woman the man didn't know the bank accounts of the woman and people were using it by heart when the, the husband was there languishing in poverty why because when you were alive the oneness and the household concept was not practiced in your house 
God look at marriage as one household and the children that come from the marriage as one household that is why he's interested in the marital bed for the children that will come will come from the two people who have come together as one and the children will become blessed in the house as a household God is interested in legally marrying people their bed because the children are not separated from them parents because of the one household we have to we have to think twice about this the audacious concept of marriage is wrong it's wrong 100 percent wrong it's going against bible decision and if you're a christian and you want to marry like the world your marriage will fail we must use the concept of god in our marriages Acts chapter 20 verse 35 when Apostle Paul was living he was giving his final instructions to how the church members must avail themselves in the sight of God because when they move in the sight of God it is when the church members come together that one man will marry one woman in the church, one woman will marry a man in the church. So there's a general concept that Paul wanted to leave the church. I have showed you all things, how that so liberating we ought to support the weak. Hmm? And to remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. So if the brother that I'm in the church with has become my husband, if the sister I'm in the church with has become my wife, and one of us is weak financially, and I'm able to support, I must not respect any replication, for it is better to, it is blessing to give than to receive because before they became husband and wife they were children in the house of God and there's a general concept that when one is weak one must support it's a general concept so now that my husband is weak in finances I will support and according to Apostle Paul Jesus Christ said if you give a man to support the man don't think of receiving it back because there's more blessing than giving than to receive. So the husband who will receive the support for the wife will pray for the wife and the wife will get 10 times more than he has given him. Praise the Lord. Because the concept of household was built on the basis that when one man falls, another will pick him up. When one is cold, the second will make him warm. So in the concept of God's children and in the life of man, the weakness must always be supported. Apostle Paul, after talking to the book of, in the book of Acts, went to Thessalonians and told them the same thing. In Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 14, now we, not him alone, exhort you brethren warn them that are unruly comfort the feeble minded and then what support the weak be patient towards all men and that is where I want to end this when your husband's business have gone down and you are helping him be patient sister and pray and support him until he returns to his former state if you are impatient and you always nag the man he will not come up the marriage will be hanging on the facial point you are married but in true heart there is no joy so when we are supporting the weak we must be patient 
for we expect the weak not to remain weak anymore the weak must rise up to be strong so that they also can support for it is the support of the weak and the weak become greater and the weak also become support and support and the church grows and the church becomes so strong so that we become supporting for each other it is a general rule within the church of god but as it's a general rule so also we are selecting wives and husbands within the general rule and that general rule must go to us more also when we are husband and wife in the house so you cannot let the weak woman not financially alone a sick woman because she is sick you neglect her to extend that all my finances have gone to the hospital i'm buying medicines it's a useless man the weak the strong must support the weak and then other way around in whatever state it is it's a general rule of god for the church and so long as husbands and wife will come out of the church then this general rule must go upon us also praise the lord if you we are able by the grace of god to enter into marriage with the laws of god whatever hurdle that we get within the marriage god will solve it for us that is the mistake we are making we are following marriage on the basis of marriage counselor on the basis of divorce lawyers on the basis of uh, women Beijing women women's right and men's right and all those things and so our marriages are shaky there's only one rule god's rule the wisdom of god surpasses every wisdom of man in the world so even though the bible is now disregarded and is not expected marital christians must bring the word of god back into their marriages and look at the woman differently and look at the man differently and build the concept of oneness among themselves for if you are two people divided in a house and both of you are working and you don't join things together to help each other i want to emphasize again it reaches a point there will be competition and where there is competition one will lose one will win and if you are a bad loser like me then if you win i will slap you because i don't like to lose so when you are winning you are winning and you are saying hey, <laughs> where you take the time why you two cutlass and take your head off you see the point so you see that within the house there's cat and mouse because of competition there's no unity among the people we are competing our ourselves but god doesn't want competition in the house when god enters into the house of man he look at the man the head and look at the woman and look at the coordination between them for when it was a long period when god was sitting down with abraham and he didn't see any movement of the woman in the house like normal man and so forth he said abraham where is sarah oh no 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 god he's in the chamber oh okay 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 because normally he wants to see the coordination and god is happy that is how he created adam and eve to be so when he sat down there and waited and waited and there is no movement and nothing was happening he must ask the, the man abraham where is sarah your wife they came from heaven to ask of the woman it's wonderful and then men will stand there and disgrace women as if they are nothing in this entire message because they said the prophet said the prophet said the prophet said the woman is a byproduct and god came from heaven to abraham and asked of the woman and you will sit down in Bolichachi and you are, you are insulting your wife God himself, the creator of the universe, came and asked for Sarah, where, uh, Abraham, where is your wife, Sarah? And you, you are living in Keta. You don't want to respect the, the woman because Abraham said, Abraham said, Abraham said, you are trampling over the woman as if in the entire message home, a woman has got no mouth. It's wrong. 
It's wrong. He can't speak. He's so disguised as an emotional, useless person. And we come and stand in the pulpit and say, Abraham said, Abraham said, Abraham said, God came down and asked Abraham, Where is Sarah thy wife? She was important to God. Who are you? I want to end my case. I become annoyed those people who, who, who come and say, Abraham said, Abraham said, Abraham said. Praise the Lord. I, I don't want to talk too much. I've entered into a house of a pastor or a church in the end time message. And when the wife was coming, the wife was trembling. No one put it, Mrs. Sister, why? Sister, why? No one put it, Untu Mumpu Nkasa, in front of the husband. Because of the way they have been maltreated. You come and stand at the pulpit and sing, We are marching. I'm going home. Shall we bow our heads? Father, we give you praise. We magnify your name and glorify you for your word. We plead that what we speak will enter into the heart of man yes. and man will change to follow your rules in your marital institution. Thank you, Father, till you bring us back here on Sunday. Amen.